You're listening to the Thomas Talk Podcast with Josh and John. You can listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Anchor, and SoundCloud. So it's been a little while since anybody's really heard anything about Thomas Talk. Um, it's, it started off as a web series, but now it is not. Did you ever watch Thomas Talk, John? Yes, at least two and a half times. Two and a half times. I think there was 32 of them, yes. so you have to like watch the later 29 and a half times. Nah, I'm it, good. I got it all in. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a pretty interesting show, though. Um, it had an audience at the time, but you know, it's, it's good to be back. Um, and I like that people can't see my face. Uh, Because I remember there was a time, there was an episode where I I dressed up as Thomas, but it was Percy. So I put a sign on Thomas that said, not Thomas. And then I dressed up as Sir Topham Hatt. And I reenacted a scene uh, from an episode that had just been released. And a few days later, my girlfriend at the time sent me a Snapchat of her watching it. And I was like, why? Why are you watching this? And I found out that she was watching all of my videos and she had been subscribed for a while. And I suddenly felt like very self-conscious about everything I had made. Uh, but like, <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. Um, but like, that's the thing is, you know, how many people in your life, John, actually know about your obsession with Thomas the Tank Engine? Well, I guess the first part of that is that for me, it's not quite an obsession anymore. I mean, I I still love Thomas. I still appreciate it. I still recognize that it was a big part of how I became me in all the wonderful messed up ways that that is. But uh, I mean, I would say probably the, the main person was my best friend in high school knew about it. And actually, when I told him about how Magic Railroad was supposed to be wicked different, he actually got really excited and really into that. Um so he was he was supportive of it, but other than that, like only a handful of people really knew. I mean, now I would mention it offhand, like, oh yeah, I got into filmmaking because of Thomas the Tank Engine because they used models, and most people are pretty receptive of that. They don't they don't know that other people have an obsession about it. Well, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, I I would straight up call mine an obsession, like an obsession with Thomas the Tank Engine. If you walked into my apartment and saw the decor around here, it's pretty obvious that there's something going on. Um, and most people do know about my involvement in the Thomas fandom. Um, I've always been very open about it, but there are a lot of people who aren't open about it and do kind of push it into the shy corners of their life. Um, and now there's a documentary that's being made about us as a fandom, uh, that's kind of exposing us to the world. We're joined now by Brandon Cardi, who is the director of An Unlikely Fandom, and he's so far traveled across the U.S. interviewing Thomas fans from all different walks of life. Uh, thanks for joining us, Brandon. Hey, guys. What's uh, what's popping? It's popping. Thomas goes pop. Yeah. Or pop goes Thomas. It's the other way around. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you have to know that this is a fandom that's kind of out of the ordinary to think of making a documentary about it. Like, they, no one makes documentaries about people who watch The Big Bang Theory. You know, you have to know that this is a strange fandom. Right, and I think that's, I think that's what kind of got me sort of thinking, like, oh, this would make a good documentary, because, because it is odd. And I say that as someone who's in it. I, I know that this is weird, and people around me know that this is weird. So if I embrace it, and kind of show it in a very neutral light. Maybe there's something that people can get out of this. I don't know. Still, still wondering that. So you've talked to quite a few people who are in the Thomas the Tank Engine fandom. How private do they keep Thomas in their lives generally? It seems most people, it, it's like a half and half thing. A lot of people will come up to me afterwards and be like, hey, I don't want my real name used. And I'm like, I'm sorry. They're like, why? Well, I don't want people to know. And it's like, what? You, okay. And then there are others that are just like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is going to be interesting when it comes out. And like my, my dad or my, my girlfriend or my boyfriend sees this. It's like, okay. Well, people are, a lot of people are okay with it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, my, my, my significant other knows. Certain people know, um, but not the general public. And so when this thing does hit the general public, I think, 
a lot of people, their lives are going to change. Uh, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. Um, but that's that's something that is kind of concerning is that a lot of people keep it within like their close friend group, but they're not open about it, and that's okay. I don't think I don't think there's a problem with that. But you know, it's it's kind of weird the, the levels that people will go to keep something a secret like that when it's such a huge part of you. Right, and really, the only people that know that there's an adult Thomas fandom are the people who know someone who's in it. So what do you think the general reaction from the public is going to be when they see this documentary about people who are way out of the target audience that still watch Thomas the Tank Engine? So, so yeah, so I showed it to my, I showed it around to like my professor and some people at college, um, just like rough cuts. And so th- their first reaction, they laugh. And I, I don't blame them. They're like, wait a minute. What? It's Thomas the Train. Like, what? what why? <laughs> yeah. And and you have to correct them, pat him on the back, and it's Thomas the Tank Engine, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then after that, so I showed it to my professor, and he he could not, he couldn't stop laughing for a little bit. But by the end of it, he was like, "Oh, oh, okay, that that, that makes perfect sense." And like I showed it to like my my sister, and like she's older than me, so she she's watched me love Thomas for a long time. But even then, she never got it. She never understood it, but she saw it. And she's like, you know what? What, what that, that that makes a lot of sense. The way that these people are talking about it, it's not. It's not some weird obsession. It's it's kind. Of, it, yeah, I don't know. It, it's hard to put it into words. I think the general public. Oh, there are going to be people who who don't watch it. They'll see. Oh, that's a Thomas the Tank Engine fandom documentary. I don't like it. It's like people who see the Bronies talk and they're like, okay, I don't want to see that. I'm saying, I'm saying that as someone who has said that multiple times. But, but I, I think, think if they sit down and watch this Thomas the Tank Engine fandom doc, they are going to see pa- people who are passionate about this one particular thing, and they're not taking it to weird obsessive levels. They're using it to further their careers, and using it to cope with, with things going on in their lives that, in, in a very positive and healthy way. And I think, I think if they actually take the time to give it, to give it a chance, they, they'll, they'll respect it. Well, I think that's interesting you say that because most people of the general public, you know, are they will kind of laugh it off at first, but they're open to understanding it. Um, mm. Like I've had people, I, I haven't been made fun of for liking Thomas since like grade six or grade seven. Um, but, you know, as I've gone on later in life, people say to me, you know, like, it's cool that you like Thomas, but like, why? We just, and they just want to understand because they don't understand why it is that people like Thomas still. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's it, it's it's always a weird conversation starter. It's like, you know, when someone that you kind of meet, you know, fi- finally figures out, like, oh, what's this about? And then you have to have that conversation with them, like, oh, it's it's just it's it's this thing that I do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like you said, when when you're like in middle school and like elementary, it becomes a problem for some reason. But like once once you're outside of like high school and in college. Nobody gives a shit. No one really cares. <laughs> they just think it's interesting. Whether good or bad, you know, that's up to whoever's thinking about it. But I, I don't know. It's, I, John, what about you? Like, does anyone. Well, I think in, in most circumstances, I mean, you're definitely right about how in grade school, it's definitely the worst. And for me, it was all the way up to eighth grade. It was a really embarrassing thing to handle. But. Uh, once I got into high school, people people were much more receptive of it. Um, now, one thing I'm I'm still unsure about is when you get past high school and college into the professional world. You know, we're we're film people. Do you tell a potential employer, "Oh yeah, I got into filmmaking because of Thomas the Tank Engine"? Would that be a, a turnoff for them? I I can answer that question for you. Actually, I I, I applied to a film school. Um, uh, this was a few years back, and. I went to the interview process and they're like, well, what inspired you to get the film? And I answered with Thomas the Tank Engine and Thomas the Magic Road. And I didn't get, I didn't get in, safe to say. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe that's, maybe that's Yay! why, maybe that's why my application for film school went through is because I didn't say Thomas. I said, Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a much more valid answer. <laughs> but, so pro tip, don't ever say that on a resume or an application. Don't ever tell them. When, when when would you bring it up though? Like at, at the sit down interview or, or what? Yeah, this this was the sit down interview, and I, I think 
I think these two people that were interviewing me looked at looked at themselves and were like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what is this kid doing? Guys, we got but, another one. So yeah. don't mention it until you get hired, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then, then, then it's too late. Well, no, I've, I've got producers that very much know that I um, I like Thomas the Tank Engine. I mean, I just shot a film in Spain, and I went to a flea market there one of my days off and bought a bunch of Ertl Thomas trains and took them back and showed them to the producer, and they were very excited. Um, and they just know that, you know, it's... Um, my employers and my colleagues just kind of know that it's something about me. I don't walk into the room and go, guess what, everyone? I love Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, <laughs> but it's something that, you know, after a while, after they dig deep enough on my Instagram feed or whatever, they see something, they just kind of go, oh, okay. But I think I think something interesting that you mentioned, uh, Cardi, is that there are lots of people you've met who have, you know, made careers out of their interest in Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, like, what are some examples that you've seen of that? Well, there's there's one guy, uh, Ed. Ed Strains, or, yeah. And this guy works on a railroad now. And the, the reason that he, you know, found this place and got this job is really because he loves Thomas the Tank Engine, which which is great. And that's, that's incredible. And you do have people, like, in the filmmaking world who are filmmakers because of Thomas, the, you know, the, the Thomas Creator Collective, which, you know, is... That, that, that's, a, that's, that's a can of worms, but people have that on their resume now. Like they, they have this official capacity that they worked under, and it's because of Thomas that, that they got that opportunity. Um, and then there are people in the UK that, that I've talked to, like like Michael White, for example, writes for the show now. Isn't that incredible? He's a Thomas fan, right? And it's just like, uh, and that's that's what I hope people take out of this film. It's like you're not just sitting on this interest and doing nothing. You're actively engaging with it and going beyond it, so to speak. And John, you've kind of turned what was an initial interest in Thomas into a bit of a career, too, in a way. Yeah, it was it was a pretty intentional change, actually. You know, I, I saw high school as a, a bit of a blank slate, and I thought, well, let me let me make Thomas the secondary thing and make filmmaking the primary thing. And that was that was a very intentional reinvention of myself. And then eventually that just became... Who I actually am, and frankly, I'm I'm a lot happier <laughs> this way. Um, you know, I I took a quite large step back from Thomas, and I don't think everyone has to do that, but I I think it was, it was healthy, uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, you know, I I I didn't put Thomas on my application to school at all. Um, I usually mention that once you know people know me better, but um, I don't know, it worked out okay. I I remember being ma- I was. I mean, bullied a lot through elementary, not just for liking Thomas, but for liking trains in general. Um, yeah. A lot of people just made fun of me for that. Uh, and I remember talking with someone online in the Thomas fandom, and I won't say who they are, but they might know who they are. Um, and they said, well, you need to tell people you've grown out of it. Like, you need to pretend like you don't like Thomas anymore. And I tried that for about three days before I just went, yeah, this isn't me. And I couldn't do it. Um, yeah. And, it, you know, it gets to the point where people just have to accept you for who you are. And if they can't do that, then they're not worth your time. If you can't handle me at my train, you can't handle me at my workers. <laughs> if you can't handle me at the buffers. <laughs> oh, never, never worry about me at the buffers. But I don't think I don't think you should ever have to pretend you don't like something to make people like you. I I'm, I'm I'm on the fence about that one. Um, and I I say this is some. So I, I took I took a really big step back from this for like a year from Thomas. It was, it was like two years ago. I, I just stopped. I was like, no, I don't want anything to do with this anymore. This is ridiculous. And and, and I hate to say this as someone who's now like deep in it again, but like those, those, that was like the best year of my life. Was kind of going out and doing things and not having that on my conscience that being said having come back to this thing and doing this film now i have a lot more real friends i had acquaintances for a while not being in thomas i had people that i would meet at places and be like yeah hey let's get a beer whatever but now i have actual friends that i can be like oh hey you want to hang out like let me let me come to your house or something let's all do something let's get on a discord call 
And I don't think I would have that without coming back into Thomas. So it's it's kind of a double edged sword. But it's not like it's not like you went and sold all your trains. Like it was still there deep down, I'm sure. It it was there, it was just very much repressed and hidden away in a closet somewhere. And you still felt like you were yourself? I it definitely felt like a part of me was missing. I had to it's like there was a piece of the puzzle missing. There was, a, yeah, a, I would, there was a missing piece of the puzzle, and then I filled it in with something else. I filled it in with the wrong piece. Oh, okay. And be, and I became a much different human being that I don't think I'll ever be again, which is good, because that wasn't fun. See, it's, you don't have fun doing it, but you, you, you kind of, your life changes in some good ways and some bad ways. But at the end of the day, you, you do, I think you do have to accept it, even though, you know, I, don't know. I, f- I found that it has held me back in some cases, but not all of them. But that, that's 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 another story. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to go to a game that we have here. Uh, we are yes. going to play Thomas the Tank Engine Mad Libs. And for those of you who don't know what Mad Libs is, basically you take a bunch of terms like verbs and nouns and adjectives and you kind of create them out of context, and then you put them into a story and see how they fit in. We asked Cardi before we went live uh, to come up with a list of Thomas the Tank Engine themed verbs and adjectives uh, to put into the story. John, did you want to go through the terms that Cardi came up with? Yes, I shall. So, Cardi was required to give us... Do you, want, do you want to know what kind of word it was supposed to be, or just the words? Just, uh, like, if it's a plural noun, and then what it is. Okay, so he had to give us a plural noun, which was buffers, an adverb, which was bashing, a verb, which was toot, an article of clothing, which was top hat, a body part, which was foot, an adjective, which was useful, a noun, which was fish, a plural noun, which was buffers, <laughs> uh, uh, another body part, which was ass, uh, a plural noun, which was break vans, another body part, which was forehead, a noun that was breakfast, a noun that was deputation, a verb ending in ing, which was crying, an adjective, which was problematic, an adjective, which was toxic, and a verb, which was weeshing. And that's a lot of words, but we shall plug them in. To have Brandon Cardi give us advice on how to date the coolest guy or girl in school. Oh, dear Kay. God. So I'm going to read the story, and John is going to plop in the terms that we just read yes. out. Yes. And this is how it's going to go. Okay, are you ready? You ready to hear your work read aloud? Oh, no. Let's, okay. let's do this. Okay, here we go. It's simple. Turn the... Buffers. Make him slash her want... Bashing. To, to date you. Make sure they're always dressed to... Toot. <laughs> what is... Each... <laughs> each and every day, wear a... Top hat. That you know shows off your... Foot. <laughs> to... Useful. Advantage. And make your... Fish. Look like a million... Buffers. Even if the two of you make a meaningful ass contact, don't admit it. No hugs or break vans. Just shake his slash her forehead firmly. And remember, when he slash she asks you out, even though a chill may run down your breakfast and you can't stop your deputation from from crying, just play it problematic. Take a long pause before answering in a very toxic voice. I'll have to weeshing it over. Yes. So that's how you get a date, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here from Mr. Brandon Cardi. Please cite him as your source and refer to him to any law enforcement. This has worked multiple times, I guarantee you. You just wear a top hat and, uh, you know, shake their forehead and touch their ass and there you go. (laughs) Listen to that. I've got like six tender dates on my belt by doing this. Whoa. <laughs> well, that's an, okay. That, that goes kind of into the next topic is when do you tell a romantic partner that you like Thomas the Tank Engine? <laughs> boy, oh boy, do I have an answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you were the person to ask. <laughs> um, 
I, I have been in mul- multiple things, and I have found that you 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 get that. I so yeah. Sometimes sometimes you get you get a place by ear. Sometimes you tell them up front, and that's great because then they know, and it's like, oh, well, I like this weird thing too. Let me tell you about it, and it's like, oh, well, there's mutual, there's a mutual understanding. Other times, they're not really cool about it <laughs> and they're like okay well it's too late yeah i can't leave now so <laughs> as horrible as that sounds unless like, unless you have to go find the bathroom in quotations <laughs> it's like we're two years into this thing so it's like oh. hey, <laughs> nothing you can do about w- wait a minute when did you wait two years I can't answer that question. How do you wait two years? Don't you have, like, Thomas toys or anything in your house? The, the thing is, I... Whenever I date someone, it goes on for, like, three, four years at a time. Like, I, it's never a short thing. So, the, halfway in, I feel like that's okay. And I, I usually... Yeah, I do keep it out of, like... I don't have a display. At least I didn't. I do now. I have a Thomas display in my house. And that, that does make it interesting. Especially when someone does come over and they're like, oh what the hell i'm not i'm not gonna sit here with you and have thomas staring at me well that's that's fair that's fair um and i on my most recent date uh this girl um it was our was our first date she asked me out so like yeah yeah i'll go let's let's go get dinner so we got dinner and she was like well what kind of stuff are you into and And so i dropped i dropped the bomb like hey this is insane and i don't blame you if you think i'm crazy but i have i'm into thomas the tank engine and she was like, oh. <laughs> but, but then she paused. She's like, well, I'm into horses. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's equally weird. No, it's not. Wait, hold on a minute. Hor- it's like, <laughs> like, just like, I like to ride horses or like? She was like super into it. She, uh, it was kind of scary. I would say that's more weird. And she was also really into guns, and I'm surprised she didn't shoot me on sight. <laughs> but so she she was like, oh, "I'm I'm into horses. You're you're a brocomotive. It's fine. It's cool. We'll, we'll be fine." Needless, Needless to say, we never went on another date after that one. And I I don't think Thomas had anything to do with it. I think it was the gun thing. But that's, that's I think it was because you you knew she she liked horses. I think that put you off. That and she vaped. I was like, no. <laughs> oh. Listen, I only like my trains to smoke, not my people, all right? Yeah, that's... Trains steam, John. Hey, you know what? It's... You're not supposed to have anything but air, so that's that's a thing. See, I, I feel like, you know, letting a romantic partner know that you're into Thomas is something that's very much like you either have all of me or you have none of me. But at the same time, I do feel like whipping it out on the first date when they haven't really got to know you might be a bit much i i agree it, it definitely was a bit much the problem is that my perspective here like when you when you have like 20 different first dates you just get tired it's like okay you and i feel like the, it when it becomes such a vital part of you especially like for me now i'm speaking just from my own personal perspective like it is a big part of me because it's like people are going to know that I'm making this film and they're going to wonder why I know about this thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm into it. It's fine. I'm not going to watch Thomas every day. It's fine. <laughs> and a lot of the time, if you do word it right, they're totally cool with it, I think, most of the time. Most of the time. I mean, it, it does beg the question, you know, is it worth putting that picture of me when I was 13 with a uh, with, uh, live or a a life scale sized Edward at Drayton Manor at Thomas land on my Tinder. You know, is that how you reveal it? Is just put it in your bio. I, I have a picture of me with Thomas on my Tinder right now. And actually my bio as it stands as a, uh, let's go get cheesecake factory. And I will tell you all about my theories about Thomas, the tank engine. <laughs> and I'm telling you it's working because people were responding like, all right, let's hear it. Tell me, tell me the juice. Tell, tell me the tea on that guy. But do they do they ever follow up with a date, or is it just the, the pure interest? I've gotten a number. I've gotten a few numbers out of it. Really? Okay. Not, not, that, not that it matters right now, because we're all, you know, isolated. It's like, all right. And there's not much you can on. do right now about that. That being said, I don't think I don't think you should go on to, like, these dating sites or into a relationship wearing a Thomas the Tank Engine t-shirt. That's too far. Don't. It's a thing. 
it can be part of your personality, but but when it becomes your life, that's when it's problematic. And I think you're going to turn a lot of people off. I would agree with that. I, I think it's okay to keep that part of you alive and to be upfront and go, hey, I, I like Thomas and I still watch Thomas from time to time. But I think you need to have other interests as well. And Thomas can't be your only soul thing. Exactly. You have to you have to be three dimensional. If Thomas is the only thing you got going for you, that that, that that's concerning. No. I'll, I'll say it in that way. Yeah. So, have you? I guess this is the other thing. If you put Thomas on your Tinder Tinder bio, does that mean that you need Thomas pickup lines? Well, well of course. You got to say like, "Hey, I'm really useful in bed," or. <laughs> I'll give you a good bashing or something. I don't know. I'll shunt you in the freight car yard. I don't know. <laughs> Most people don't oh. know what shunting is. Uh, people ask me all the time, what does shunting mean? Like they watch an episode of Thomas and they don't know what shunting means. Oh, they'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sorry. that's enough of that. Sorry. <laughs> Do you have people in your life that like come to you as a Thomas expert? Um, I, yeah. They, they do. People, it's getting to the point now where a lot of people from school who now know about my interests, they send me like those Normie Thomas memes on a daily basis. Yeah, I get those too. I, I got one the other day and it was like Thomas as a, like a spider and he's like crawling around on the floor. And I was like, ha that's so funny. Thank you. <laughs> and like, I do appreciate that. And, and then they'll be like, oh, my, my little nephew, he's into Thomas now. Like, what's the name of the green engine? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, that, that's that's Percy. And they're like, okay, thanks. It's like, okay. You should say which one. Yeah, there are like three of them, buddy. God. Yeah, what's what's the blue engine? And that's if you don't, ca- that's if you don't count Henry. <laughs> I don't think. Who's Henry? Henry and Edward? Who are they? Um, there was a time a few years ago when I was working at a TV station. I walked into the studio wearing uh, my Thomas and Friends Thomas Talk t-shirt because I think I just shot it in the morning. I didn't want to wear a different shirt. And one of the videographers went, oh, cool. My daughter's really into that. Um, and to this day, he still texts me with questions. Like a, like a, a few days or not a few days ago, a few weeks ago, he texts me and he goes, don't you think Skiff the Railboat's a little far-fetched? And and I was just like, I was just like, hold your horses. And I went and I dug up my Andrew Brenner picture of a boat on wheels, on rails, and sent it to him and went, aha. And his only reply was, I stand corrected. And that was our conversation about Skiff the Railboat. That you pwned that normie, man. <laughs> but it's possible to have that kind of relationship with people and be known as a Thomas expert. You know, there are lots of other fandoms that people are interested in that people turn to for information, like Trekkies or whatever you call people who are into Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I've got a name for those people, but I don't think it's appropriate to say. <laughs> Aren't you <laughs> one of them? Yeah. yeah. See, people ask me, oh, like, which order do I watch Star Wars in? But, like, imagine if people asked, oh, what order do I watch Thomas in? Like, what, what if it was the same sort of <laughs> same sort of? Just you always right. always start with the episode thomas and the toy workshop oh well that's that's one way to do it for sure <laughs> always you start just, with that one you, you start and end with magic railroad that's all you do <laughs> <laughs> what is what is a good episode of thomas to show someone to show them that we're normal um cranky bugs good cranky <laughs> bugs why cranky bugs I, because it's it's cool and or, no 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 I take that back I take it back. Duncan gets spooked. Oh, oh that's a good one. season five in general. I feels good. I uh, this is sort of a, a a weird offbeat from that, but uh, one of my longtime friends one day he was like, "Hey, do you just want to like watch Thomas or something?" I was like, w- "What?" It's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, I torrented like season one. Do you want to watch it? And I was like. Are you okay? And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, and we just sat there, and he was like, holy shit, I, I get it. Like, this is kind of cool. And um, needless to say, that that cemented that friendship very quickly. Well, I hope he knows they're all on H, like in HD on YouTube for free. But... Yeah. God. Uh, this was back in the day when all you had was R- RSGCNA. Oh, okay. Oh. I, in that I case, apologize. I would say. If you want a, a perfect episode to introduce someone to Thomas, just show them tugs instead. <laughs> T- 
<laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think I think that's wise. Um, show the munitions. Uh, I know what you. Sh- I know yes. what you should show them. And please don't hurt me. What? Don't show them Theodore. <laughs> cough, cough. Oh, I'd show them. And on that bombshell, I'm gonna go kill Cardi right now. <laughs> No. And no. with the sound of Cardi's scream echoing into the night, that is it. That's the first uh, episode of the Thomas Talk podcast with our friend Brandon Cardi, director of an unlikely fandom. Uh, it's coming out later this year. Hopefully, uh, there is some delay due to current events going on in the world. But it's coming, and it's about you. So you should find a way to watch it when it does come out. So... Thank you so much, Cardi, for coming on, talking to John and I. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me, and I hope I do you fine lads proud. You've done me very proud. Very proud, Cardi. Um, how sh- what should we say at the end of every episode, John? What should we do? Uh, bye! Bye! <laughs> Stay unlikely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs>